<clears throat> Let me ask you a question. What, what book, don't, don't just in your own mind, you don't have to shout it out or anything, but what book are you currently reading? Currently reading, I heard it right now. What are you currently reading? If your answer is, well, I'm not, I'm not currently reading a book, well, I'd ask you why. Why aren't you currently reading a book? Next question is, how many books have you read this year? Is it the one you're currently reading? The reason why I ask you this, because I, I, I believe, I, I didn't my whole life, but I believe that, that books are uh, just unbelievably important. Because I believe in, uh, I believe in uh, mentorship. And I've said this to my boys, I've said this to everybody I know for years and years and years. I learned it when I was with Wycliffe. And that's this, that everybody should be being mentored by somebody, always, always. And you should be mentoring somebody always. Now, why would that be so? Well, to be being mentored is to, to learn new things, to get new skills, learn new things about life. Always being mentored, whether it's in your business, whether it's in your personal life, whatever it is, you should be being mentored. And then you should take that information and use it to mentor somebody else. Because when, if you've ever, how many of you have ever taught anything, anywhere, anything, kids, anything like that, you've taught. What you find is this, I know you'll be true, that when you have to teach it, when you really know if you understand it or not. Isn't that true? Right? You could think you know something, you have to start putting it down on paper. Jordan Peterson says this about uh, young people, but especially young men. He said the best thing that young people could do for themselves is the very thing that they don't want to do, and schools don't even help them do, is two things. One is read, and the second is write. How many 16-year-olds want to read and write? I don't want to do that. But it's one of the best things you can do for your life. And the writing is like the teaching part. Do you follow me? Because when you teach, you write things down. You, start, you learn real quick what you know and what you don't know. And you have to simplify things to your audience to help them understand. Let me read you a couple quotes. Socrates said this. Employ your time in improving yourself by other men's writing so that you shall be easy, uh, you shall be easy by what others have labored hard for, okay? So in other words, uh, don't learn from your mistakes, learn from mistakes of others, right? Read, learn what other people were saying. Um, I, 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 th I really do, I, I think reading may, may be one of the most important and valuable skills that you could ever learn in your life, reading. And I didn't start reading until late in life. You know, I, I hated to read. I'm still not a good reader, and, and the reason why I'm not a good reader is because I didn't read when I was young. And so now I'm having to make up for lost time. And so I'll tell you, I have a goal every year to read uh, a book a week, 52 books. I have never made it. It doesn't matter to me. I have a goal to try to read 52 books a year. I think the most I've made was like 30, I think it was 32 or 33, something like that, most I ever made. You know, they're not all big, long books. They're smaller books or whatever, but that's not the point. The point is to always be reading. Listen to this. This is uh, Charlie Munger. He's a, this is a billionaire investor. Some of you may have heard of him. He said, in my whole life, I have never known, uh, I have known no wise people over a broad subject matter area who didn't read all the time. None, zero. I, I never met one. If, 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 if he meets a wise person in a broad area, it's because they are well read. Think about it. If you solely rely on your own experiences and your interactions to develop personally, how limited is that? Isn't that true? Like it's so limited in your development. And so we, we pick up books. You don't just, let me just give you a couple th points of advice. Don't just pick up books that you currently, an author you currently, let's say it's a, on a subject matter, that you currently agree with. And you read and you go, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I agree with that, I agree with that, I agree with that. Read things that will challenge you. Read things that are, that are outside of your, your domain. Dale's domain is finance, finance. Read outside the domain of finance, right? Broaden that. And so I don't just read things on theology. I read things out, try to read things outside of that to challenge me and to, to help me in my, uh, in my quest to be a, a better communicator, for example. Uh, to be able to, the more you read, if you're a speaker, the more you read outside, the more you read Bible, outside biblical books, even outside of that, you have a lot more to draw on when you speak. So if you're going to speak for this length of time about a subject, you better have this much information. 
if you're going to speak on this much subject and you have that much information on it, it's going to be very difficult. I think it's going to show. Mark Twain said this, a person who won't read, this, is, this was me, this is so funny, a person who won't read has no advantage over one who can't read. A person who won't read. Confucius said this, no matter how busy you may think you are, you must find, find, find time for reading or surrender yourself to self-chosen ignorance. Powerful stuff, huh? Oscar Wilde said this, it is what you read when you don't, uh, sorry about that, it is what you, see I'm not a very good reader. It is what you read when you don't have, to that determines, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not a very good reader. I say all that to say this. I read a book, and it's going to be the basis for our new series. And uh, it's called 12 Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson. It's in your notes. Grab your notes there. Look at it. And each chapter, here's the chapters. Today's message is this. Stand up straight with your shoulders back. It's so funny because I never thought about this kind of stuff before I read the book. And now I prepared this message. So today as I was standing there, as people were walking in, I was noticing their posture. Everybody's posture. And I noticed some good posture. I noticed some bad posture. Right? But I've never, I was never aware of it before until I read this book. Number two is treat yourself like someone you respect. You are responsible for helping. Three, make friends with people who want the best for you. Four, compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not how somebody else is today. Five, don't let your, ch I can't wait to do this one. Don't let your children do anything that makes you dislike them. Six, set your house in perfect order. You should underline that right there, perfect order. Huh? Set your house in perfect order before you criticize the world. Pursue what is meaningful, not what is expedient. Tell the truth, or at least don't lie. Assure, um, assume that the person you're listening to might know something that you don't. Be precise with your speech. Do not bother children when they are skateboarding. Pet a cat when you encounter one on the street. So we're going to spend the next three months uh, in this book. Now, here's the thing. Let me just tell you something. If you've read the book, uh, great. If you haven't, I recommend you read it. Now, Jordan Peterson is, he's a little smarter than I am. Uh, Jordan Peterson is like, he's like over the top. He's just a really, really smart guy. But he doesn't write, I mean, it's not that he can't understand his reading, but I want to just preface this. Uh, the book, I'm using all the, the chapter titles for each series, but I'm not necessarily using his information in the book. Does that make sense? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that. I'm going to take the, the idea behind it that he develops. Like the first one, he talks all about how similar we are in our, uh, in our uh, brain structure and chemistry to lobsters. Yeah, that's what I thought too. And he develops this whole thing and everything. And I thought, wow, this is really something, I guess. I don't know. But anyways, uh, but I'm taking the principle. Like, I, I got the principle through the whole thing. Like, I got it. So what I want to do now is I want to bring it to us in a way that's going to be helpful for us. I want to show you how Scripture will support what I'm going to talk about. Um, so here, my idea is this. Do you remember those, they're still out, those books, uh, such and such, uh, some kind of topic for dummies? The Dummy series. So, like for example, I have a couple of them. There was one philosophy for dummies. Philosophy for dummies. That up there is right there. Philosophy for dummies. Another one was this. Uh, you might like this one. Revelation for dummies. How many need that one? Like I need that one, right? Revelation. I still don't get revelation. The next one, maybe we should all get a little bit of everything for dummies. The last one, I'm going to order online right away, Relationships for Dummies. <laughs> Need to figure that one out. So this is my attempt at taking these 12 rules and making them kind of 12 rules for dummies. And, and you know, I'm, I'm not, of course those books aren't calling us dummies. It's just saying, you know, take this information and, and, and say it in a way, write it in a way that the average person could... Uh, glean something from it, 
taking their life and, and, and improve their, their life. So we're going to look at these 12 rules. And we're, what I'd like to do is I'd like to show this. I'd like to show how, how this will help us. Uh, not, it's not just practical stuff. It is that too, right? Just in like stand up straight, very practical. But uh, like the, the, um, uh, the emotional aspects of it, the physiological aspects of it, the spiritual benefits of that. And so today we're looking at the very first rule, stand up straight with your shoulders back. You know what's so funny is because yesterday I was, uh, I was sitting at our counter, if you've ever been to my house, the kitchen counter, and I was sitting on a stool, and I was uh, writing all this stuff up, I'm typing, and this morning I was doing the same thing, and I'm writing it, and I'm, I'm typing like this, I'm going, oh man, my back hurts, I'm going, look at my posture, my posture was horrible. I'm thinking, boy, I, I need this more than anybody. So oftentimes, if you notice that I preach something with a lot of gusto, a lot of emphasis, a lot, it's because I need it. If I'm, if I'm gentle and kind and full of grace, it's because this is really too much of an issue for me and I can be, I can be kind. Does that make sense? I think you'll find that with most speakers, that in my experience. The ones that are on a bandwagon, you can be assured it's their issue. If they're, if they're going after it and they're, you know, it's condemned, it's their issue. If they're, if they're full of grace and they're, and they're gentle in their speech, it's because you know why? They've, they've, they've been through the fire, they've come out on the other side, and they know how hard it is, and they can, they can, uh, they can give grace to those who are still struggling with. Does that make sense? Pay attention the next time you hear a speaker. So today, I'm gonna go after today because I have horrible, <laughs> horrible posture. Let's talk about, just kind of in our world today, a little bit about some of the pitfalls to, uh, to posture. You know, what's so funny is that um, I remember my aunt telling me that, that her dad was known, uh, and then my dad, of course, was like it too because of his dad, and unfortunately, my dad passed away when I was young. I didn't pick that up off him, but they were known, they were actually talked about for having good posture. Yeah, and I never knew what good posture was. Like I thought I, people had good posture there, but there is a, a good posture is not just standing up straight, but how, how, you, how your hips are, how your butt is, your shoulders, where your ears are. Most people that I found is, is what they call head forward. Head forward. Most people walk around life like this, head forward. Not, not stand up straight with your shoulders. When you put your shoulders back, guess where your head goes? Head goes back. And once you read about this, you read about how good it is, and I'll talk about this, how good it is for your whole body, right? How good it is for your spine and how, everything else, right? And so here's the thing. As you age, as you age, right, uh, you face an increased risk of things. One of the things that, uh, matter of fact, Con Connie was just telling us about her mom. Your mom fell, didn't she? She fell. As we get older, we face an increased risk of falling, and so, uh, when you have bad posture, when you're leaning forward, what's it throw off? It throws off your, your center of gravity and everything. And you, see, you ever see people walk, walk around like that? Increased risk of falling. So start now, right? Even with our kids. Start now with good posture, with good alignment. It affects your center of gravity. And, and uh, a slouch posture, believe it or not, causes fatigue. You think, well, I'm tired, that's why I'm slouching. Well, slouching, it's like that, that, that uh, spiral downwards, right? So you have bad posture, it causes fatigue, so you're fatigued, so now you have bad posture. And it's, a, it's this cycle, and you want to break that. Mayo Clinic says this, poor posture habits may restrict your rib cage and compress your diaphragm. This reduces lung capacity, so you're breathing. I mean, no, oxygen's important. Oxygen is really important for living. Uh, leading to shallow or labored breathing, fatigue and lack of energy, which can affect your productivity. Also noted that hunching over can cause stress on your heart. Man, I, I perked up on that one. I'm trying to do everything I can not to cause stress on my heart, right? And I'm trying to eat, eat better so it, you know, it's better for my heart, all that kind of stuff. Why? because good hearts don't run in my family, but that's okay, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm, that I'm tied to that because I could do things like this to change those things. Poor posture can lead to headaches and to neck pain. Uh, so there's a, do I have the picture of, I have the picture of the four things up there, the eye, eye posture? Look at this, <laughs> eye posture, bad. It's bad, I'm telling you. 
Listen, this, 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 this is causing a lot of physical problems in people today. Phones, your phone. So, well, how am I supposed to look at your phone? You look at your phone like this. You know, you don't see people doing that. Don't walk around and talk on, look on your phone, read your phone. Right? And we all do it, I know. But try to do it less. If you do it a lot right now, do it less. If you do it less, do it less than that. Walking around. I, you know, some people, uh, I love it when, I, when I, I'll text Gigi, and uh, Gigi will get, a, I'll get a thing back that says, I'm driving right now. She has it on her phone. Right? How many of you have it on your phone? Right? Connie, I tell you, I never get that from your phone. <laughs> I never get that. I'm driving right now. I'm going to do talks to text. I'm like, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Right? Yeah. But we, listen, listen I, I'm as guilty as anybody. I'm telling you, all this stuff is for me. We need, to, we need to use our phones less. Less. Not more, but less. Whatever you use it now, use it less. Now, I realize we have to use them for our jobs and everything. You have to have your phone for your kids and all that kind of stuff. But you don't have to have it on continually. And some people I know, I've seen people, of, uh, I won't mention anybody's name, but I've seen people, their phone's setting down, and they're setting down, they're not, not in their pocket, great. But every time they walk by it, they hit it, bring it back to life. Okay, nothing, walk up, hit it again, bring it back to life. Check it, right? Constantly on there. And then that, that bad posture, hunching over. So, a lot of pitfalls, I don't have to go into too many pitfalls, right? You guys, you guys all know that your posture is, is very, very important. Very important for your health. Now, let's look at some, let's look at some benefits uh, for posture that are, uh, listen, it is physical, but also, it's also metaphysical, okay? You know what, metaf- what I mean by metaphysical? It has to do with your mind, your, your psyche, your, your emotions, your, like all those things, those kind of un- intangible uh, things. So the first one is this, for example, uh, posture... Now, this is not going to surprise you, but posture and confidence are linked. Posture and confidence are linked. Another way to say it is this. Physical posture and your mental state are tied together. That's why I say it's metaphysical. So your posture, standing up, and your mental state are tied together. Let me read you a proverb. Proverbs 12, 25 says, anxiety in a, in a man's heart weighs him down. Now, use, that as, use that language as metaphor. Weighs you down. You ever see, you could, you could tell a lot about the internal state of somebody by the way they carry themselves, can't you? If you see somebody just kind of like, they're just kind of like this. They're just kind of down. Like, way down by life. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down. But a good word makes him glad. So our mental state is closely tied to our posture. Um, so let me ask you a question. Just to kind of ponder this, think about this. D- does my inner world, does my inner world determine my posture? It's chicken or the egg, right? My inner world determine my posture, or does my posture determine my inner world? Well, it's not either or, it's both and. It's both and. So when you're, when you're experiencing uh, trouble in life and stress in life, you tend to, you tend to uh, not be as careful with your posture. And, uh, and, not even, and unbeknownst to you, this is what I'm learning, unbeknownst to you, because of your, because of your subconscious, when you're going through difficult things, when you're, when you're having trouble in your life and you're maybe trouble that you'd be even be embarrassed if somebody else knew about it, it shows in your posture. Can you believe that? It shows in your posture how you carry yourself, how you're, how you're behaving, how you're presenting out to the world. But research suggests that your posture can influence your inner world. So, that's why being conscious of it is so important because when your inner world is in turmoil, you're, uh, without being conscious of your posture, your inner world is going to affect your posture. But what you can do is you can preempt that and pay attention to your posture and let your posture then, it's not going to change it, it's not, this isn't, that's not what I'm talking about, but it's going to help affect your inner world. It makes sense, doesn't it? By the way that you carry yourself. Let me tell you some uh, recent studies have shown uh, that correct posture generates 
um, really they found unexpected uh, bonuses to your life, to your mental health and brain benefits, along with you know, the, the physical stuff we all get, don't we? Right? The physical stuff we all get. You know, your, 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 your back's tired or whatever. I tell you, well, my, you know, my belly's part of it. I'm trying to do what I can to do that. Pull it on your back. It's going to give you back problems. The way you carry yourself is going to give you back problems. Look at your phone. It's going to give you neck problems. It's going to cause you to have headaches. Like all these things. Like we get all that. But now what we're seeing is, is that they are, there are um, these surprising uh, uh, internal mental uh, emotional and even spiritual benefits from good posture. And that's really what I want to bring to us today. I want to show us that. So a few surprising benefits are this. It helps reduce stress. Like our pastor says, a good word makes him glad. This suggests that words of encouragement. Now, now, why? Well, if you're talking about words, you're not talking about posture. No, it's, see, it's all part and parcel. It's all part of the same thing. When you are up, when you feel good, when you're encouraging and when you're being encouraged, it actually affects your posture. You, st- you, you stand taller. When someone's, when someone's speaking good words to you, kind words to you. Do you ever feel like that? Maybe, maybe you think it's even just, uh, uh, you know, something that's, that's uh, just taking place in your mind. Somebody encourages you. Do you ever feel like you're like an inch taller? Someone tells you something good? You feel like you're not, man, I feel like I'm an inch taller. Well, it's actually true because what happens is you start to actually stand up. So your body then is experiencing this this. Uh, encouraging word, uh, you're hearing it, and now you start, your body starts to respond to it in the same way you do that for other people. And so this kindness can help alleviate stress and anxiety. It's been shown over and over again that good posture increases confidence. Um, a study showed, I read this, that uh, students with upright posture had more confidence in their own thoughts as they speculated about their future job and job performance. Isn't that something? Just by, just by posture. These are things that surprise them. All the physical stuff, yeah, we get. But these sorts of things, okay, another one, according to research, good posture activates your assertiveness. Now, you may, have, you may understand that. That's pretty obvious, Right? You feel more confident, you're up, and so you're, and I'm not talking about assertive in a, in a negative way, I'm talking about in a, in a positive, healthy way, being assertive, asserting your, uh, you know, what, 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 asserting what you want, what you need, right, those sorts of things, being able to say yes when it's appropriate, being able to say no when it's appropriate, right, being assertive and being confident. Uh, helps you perform better under pressure. Here's another study. Students were asked to do simple math problems. And those who sat up upright reported that they found the math easier to do. Now, the author of this article, he speculates that um, using an empowered position, like you know, a strong position, whether you're sitting or whether you're standing, can help you focus on a, a variety of different things. And your performance will increase, not just in math, so uh, I took my taxes to uh, Steve Kramer. You guys know Steve. Uh, super, super nice guy, great Christian guy. Went into his office, and uh, so he's an accountant. What's an accountant do? Sits at a desk and a computer and crunches numbers all day long for people, right? Not Steve. His desk is this high, this high. He stands up, and he has, he, I looked at him, he has, because I was thinking about all this stuff when I was doing, he has great posture, standing up, standing up at his thing. And I, I, I got, I was talking to Dale the other day, he said, it's rough, I'm, I'm sitting all day long. Another thing you can do is, right, every, whatever, you pick a time, every 15, 20 minutes, get up, get up. My, my, uh, my iPhone, when I wear it, it, it has this thing, it'll tell me that, hey, it's time to get up, time to get up and walk. Just, I'm walking, it doesn't matter, it's just to get up, from, you know, break the sitting down. Anyways, I'm rambling now, right? So start practicing good posture and see if it doesn't make a difference in your life. Now, it won't be easy because what happens is, is when you start using good posture, you're going to be using muscles that you, you don't really use or they're not that strong. And you need muscles to stand up straight. You need good abdominal muscles to stand up straight. That's why it's hard for me to have so long. I get tired, right? You know, my core is like warm jello. It's not real strong, you know what I mean? So... Anyway, let's move on. Um, so if good posture can help with confidence, um, besides the obvious, why is that important? Well, it's important because of this. 
because uh, confidence then will help you uh, persevere in the face of difficulty. Persevere in the face of difficulty. James 1, 2 through 4 says this, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you face various trials of many kinds. And you will face trials of many kinds. Isn't that true? For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. When we face adversity, we have to remember to stand up, stand up tall, stand up straight. But both, both literally and figuratively. Isn't that true? Look at me for a minute. Think about that for a minute. When you face adversity, and you know that you have to deal with this problem, right? Stand up tall. Let's say you face adversity in life and somebody threatening you. Standing up tall is a more opposing figure than you being like this, what signals you're giving, right? So it's the same thing in this way. When you face different trials in your life, stand up tall, your posture, but also internally, stand up tall to face the adversity that's, gonna, that's coming in your life, in your inner self. So it's both external, your physical posture, and internally, our spiritual and emotional posture, your inner self. Friends, by doing this, what we do is we cultivate, we cultivate resilience in our life. Once you, uh, in the same way that, that uh, negative behavior, negative thought spawns more negative behavior, negative thought, so does this, right? When you, when you overcome, when you're empowered, uh, I'll tell a story, Lydia's not here, but uh, Connie used to tell uh, the kids, make their bed in the morning. They wouldn't make their bed. Our kids didn't make their bed either, right? And Lydia said one time, Mom, you're part of the make your bed club. I'm part of the not make your bed club. There's a two different club, that's all. Lydia's married and has kids, husband. Lydia makes the bed. Anyways, there's this, there an admiral in the military He's giving this speech. You probably all heard it, probably all saw it online. But he said this, the very first thing is, when you get up in the morning, I want you to do, first thing you get up, make your bed. Why is making your bed so important? Because it start with an accomplishment. Start with one thing, one accomplishment, that's it. Just start with one. You start with one accomplishment, guess, guess what you want to do? You want to accomplish something else, and then something else, and then something else, because it's contagious. So in the same way, you stand up tall, and you, you reap the benefits of it, and you'll cultivate resilience, and you'll become stronger in your, in your physical body, in your emotional health and in your faith. Um, so at this point, I'd like to uh, mention something else. Talked about how important reading is. Let me give you a book. This is, this is one of the, uh, my, when Jeff was here and his son was here, he said, Jeff, he said, you do a lot of reading. Could you give me five, your top five books you ever read? Ah, that's pretty tough, you know, so I gave him a couple. I just texted him the other day. So I was thinking about this. This is probably one of the top five books I ever read. It's called Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. Yeah, every human being should read this book. No kidding. It's that good. Listen, it says this. It's impossible. Are you listening? Everybody look at me for a minute. Stop writing. It's impossible to be spiritually mature while remaining emotionally immature. Immature. And there's, there's like two cogs in a wheel. They, they go together. You can't be spiritually mature and emotionally mature. You can't be emotionally mature without being spiritually mature. Okay, back to perseverance for a minute. Uh, let's just be honest. Okay. I don't want to be too harsh, but this, this, this is reality. I, this is reality, right? Perseverance is one of the things that separates and you'll know what I mean when I say this, winners from losers. I'm not talking about life, you're a loser in life. I'm talking about like in business, right? In sales. Perseverance separates somebody who makes a sale and somebody who doesn't. Uh, he, he said no. Are you going to call him back? Well, no, he said no. I'm going I'm to persevere, right? I mean, if you're a salesman, every salesman know, you know, you telemarketers. How many times are you going to say no? No doesn't mean anything to a telemarketer, right? Perseverance separates winners from losers. It, it does in sports too, right? You, see, you ever see a sports team just all of a sudden just kind of 
just kind of give up. But there's been times when a team's uh, an underdog. I, I remember watching, uh, uh, huh? <laughs> UConn. UConn. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's unfair when they, and they, they pay for all that talent and everything, and other guys don't have the money to pay for talent. It's easy to win then. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, no, I was watching, uh, uh, man, when you're, when you're called on a spot to pull something up, you just can't do it, huh? Um, uh, new, 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 the Patriots and uh, what's the quarterback? Brady. Brady, Tom Brady. So I'm watching with Brock one time and it's like fourth quarter and they're down by like, I don't know, it, it was a record. I think they're down by 28 points or something like that. And Brock said, this is over. I go, never count Tom Brady out. Never count him out. Why? Perseverance. Perseverance. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much time's on the clock. It doesn't matter. I, I'm going to give everything. I, I'm going to persevere till the last whistle blows. I'm not going to give up. Right? I'm not going to give up. Perseverance. Um, are you someone who perseveres? Just answer for yourself. Are you someone who perseveres despite difficulties and setbacks? Or are you, uh, do you tend to throw in the towel easily? Well, I'm here to say that that this whole idea of, of good posture, both, both internal and external posture, is, is, a, is a major benefit in learning how to persevere through difficulties, to keep pushing through, to complete the task. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that, that uh, posture affects your, uh, your psychology, your physiology. A recent study showed that posture influences, and listen to this, it's posture, your physical posture. A recent study showed that posture influences important hormones like cortisol, testosterone, guys, and you guessed it, dopamine. You know what dopamine is? Dopamine's the ding, 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 you're the winner, right? That's dopamine, right? That's what gets you to go back, dopamine. That's what people that have addictions, right? They get this dopamine, so they go in gambling, right? And they, well, ding, 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 and it sets it off, I gotta go do that again, go, go do that again, right? And so posture is responsible for dopamine. Dopamine's a fuel in, in difficult situations. What you need is you need dopamine shots, right? You need dopamine to help you continue on to help you persevere. And so if posture adds to those dopamine, that's gonna help you in your perseverance through difficulty. Make sense? Okay. Uh, dopamine is, uh, you know, it's, that, it's this reinforcement. And so when you persevere through a difficult time, you get that dopamine rush. So, so the next time you're faced with something, guess what? You're stronger. You're more capable of going through even something more difficult. The Bible says that God's not going to give us any, any, any more than what he knows that we can handle. And he's going to be there to help us through that, right? And so as we go through life, that's why it's so important. Uh, and I, again, I'm really passionate about this stuff because I didn't do it. I'm telling you. Like when your kids are little, to allow them uh, to suffer a little bit. Allow them to face the consequences of their uh, actions. Don't, don't all, now most of us have grown kids or whatever, but we can teach our kids. Don't go to rescue your kids all the time. Don't go to rescue them. Because isn't it true that, that consequences for a bad decision when you're 11 are far less consequential than they are a bad decision when you're 22? The consequences, isn't that true? Right? If they learn young to face those consequences, right, they learn that there are consequences to all behavior. So next, so posture helps your confidence and your perseverance. Um, and what does that do for us? Well, the third thing is this. Third thing is that it'll help you overcome fear and anxiety. Fear and anxiety. Since posture is linked, uh, since it's linked to uh, you know, confidence and perseverance. And God calls us to stand firm. Here's what I want you to do. In your notes, I just have a bunch of lines there. I'm going to read to you a passage of Scripture. 
And what I want you to do is, I didn't want to write it in there, so what I want you to do is I want you to listen to it. In light of what we talked about, uh, put that picture up there right now, the, yeah, leave that up there for a minute. What I want you to do is I want you to just listen. And I want you, in light of what we're talking about, posture and everything, what I want you to do is I want you to jot down some ideas, some thoughts that strike you when I read this. So, so rather than listen to it the way that you may have heard it read hundred times before, you read it before or whatever, try to listen to it in light of what I'm talking about, okay? In your mind's eye, think of your, think of physical posture or even internal posture. You ready? It's in Ephesians. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can make your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this world's darkness, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, take up the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you will be able to stand your ground and having done everything to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness arrayed, and with your feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times. With every kind of prayer and petition, to this end, stay alert with all perseverance in your prayers for all the saints. Pray also for me that whenever, whenever I open my mouth, words will be given me so that I will boldly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it fearlessly as I should. Just think about that. Look at that picture for a minute. Just think about what it takes to wear. I don't know how much armor weighs. I should have looked it up. But what it takes to wear armor. Like, I don't think you could stand hunched over, slouched over, wearing all that armor. Right? Even the metal itself is going to keep you upright and stiff. And keep your head, you keep your head straight up. Africans, uh, these ladies carry heavy, heavy loads on their head, their baskets. But to do it, they have to stand up straight with their whole body in line. Their, their whole vertebrae in line. Not like this, if they're gonna break their neck. I'm talking, listen, I'm talking hundreds and hundreds of pounds. And they'll have big baskets on their head. They'll have, they'll have a couple ladies will help lift it up, get up, they'll get underneath it, stand up, and they'll walk for miles. But they can do it because they're in line. Their body's strong. And so the importance of it, so let me give you a couple tips. I'm gonna finish up. Uh, how do we do this? Well, first, just straighten up. Straighten up. Just notice your, just start to notice your posture. When you're sitting, when you're standing, whatever you're doing, if you have to sit at a desk all the time, that's okay. Notice your posture. Do what you can. Find, find a, a chair that's going to help you with it for your lumbar. You know, you can do things to do this. If, if you believe that everything I said, what, sci what science is showing, if you believe that to be true, you'll want to do this. You'll want to say, I want to pay attention to my posture, I want to stand up straight with my shoulders back. Pretend, uh, one of the things I read said, pretend like you're standing, you ever stand against the wall uh, to get measured? What do you do against the wall to get measured? I do it like this. Kids, they want to be as tall as they can, right? Like that. I said, that's good posture. Wow, that's good posture. I see my head so far back there, but that's good posture. Right, standing up, shoulders back, head back, your ears over your, over your shoulders. Good posture, practice good posture. Practice standing up straight. Like I already said, don't slump at your desk. Be aware of, listen friends, be aware of text neck. Be aware of text neck. Sit up in your car. I, it's so funny, uh, Pete and I talk about this. And I, if you ever drive in my Jeep or Pete's truck, what you'll know is you'll, you'll get in and you'll go, what, the, what happened to your seat? Uh, my seats are both straight up. I get in my boy's car, I don't know if they're up there like this. Like, what is it? 
how in the world? What are you looking at? And you're looking at, you can't even see stop signs. I don't know how they drive like that, right? Sit up straight in your car. Another one for ladies. Ladies, leave, leave those heels, those pumps for a special night out, right? What does that do? What's it doing? It's throwing you all forward. It's not good posture. All right, that's enough. You guys get the idea, right? You guys get the idea. I'm looking forward to this series. I hope you are too. I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of great stuff. This isn't rocket science. It isn't stuff that you're not aware of. You need to be reminded of it, challenged by it. Why? Because we want to be the best version of ourselves that we can be. Let's stand. Father, we ask uh, that you, by your spirit, that you help us, help us to, uh, in our takeaway today, that which uh, is for us. I know everybody here is in a different place in life and different, uh, different things resonate with us at different times of our life. Pray, Holy Spirit, that you, you do your work. You take the words that I said and you reconfigure them and you, uh, you apply them to every heart here, God, that every single person here, any person listening to this message, online or however, that they have takeaways. That they don't just walk away and say, uh, well, that was a good message. No, they walk away with a takeaway saying, I can do something with this. I can, I can change, I can be a better version of myself. In being a better version of myself, I could be more like Christ. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, friends. Have a great day.